curiosity, and wonder. Let's discover together. It's science wow. We are here in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, which happens to be the salamander capital of the world. That means that there's more salamanders in this area for its size than anywhere else in the entire world. My name is Erin, and I also work at the Great Smoky Mountains Institute at Tremont, where we are a residential environmental learning center. Kids, adults, any age, come spend a few days, three to five days with us, and we go exploring, we look at birds, we find salamanders, we play in the creek. We just have a great time outside, learning, rain, shine, or snow. You're probably wondering, well, how do I find salamanders? Are they just everywhere? Well, kind of, in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, they kind of are everywhere. I'm gonna go meet up with my friend Tyler, and the two of us are gonna go see which salamanders we can find today. What we're looking for right now are aquatic salamanders. Of course, there's also salamanders that live under rocks, on ground, just like this. So terrestrial salamanders, but we're gonna look for aquatic. So we're gonna find a small creek. It's called a tributary. So it's a little water that comes in and joins the bigger river. And we're gonna overturn rocks. We're gonna try to find their hiding places and we're gonna look for them. Some of the salamanders that we're gonna be looking for today are in the genus Plethodon. They look a lot like those lizards, the green lizards or the skinks, those ones with the beautiful blue tails that you might see in your yard. Even though they have all these similar characteristics, they're not the same family. They're not the same species as those skinks or those lizards. So the genus Plethodon are really interesting. They actually breathe through their skin. So you or I, we breathe through our mouth, into our lungs, now imagine if this organ, it's the biggest organ we have, our skin, was actually taking in all of the air around us. You can imagine that we'd be very vulnerable to any changes in the environment. We're always really careful when we find salamanders not to touch them with our hands. Maybe we put sunscreen on or bug spray. We don't wanna to touch them with those chemicals because that's gonna be absorbed right into their bodies. So we use plastic baggies, we use little strainers, sometimes we use tubs to just scoop them up in. Another thing we do is once we have them in those tubs, we wanna use magnifying glasses and other ways that we can look at them a little bit closer. Ways that we can count their toes. We wanna to be able to see what their heartbeat is. We wanna see those color patterns that'll help us determine what species that salamander is actually a part of. So maybe they have spots, maybe they have red cheeks, which is what the Great Smoky Mountains is known for, a terrestrial salamander called the red cheek salamander. Maybe they have um, copper spots along their back. We can look at the colorations of their bellies, which you can't do when they're just scurrying around in the stream. You can see her little toes up against the bag. You can think about how those toes would be really good for kind of clinging on things underwater. They're really well adapted to the environment that they live in. So once you put them in the bag, you get a much closer look at all of those little minute details, those tiny little details that'll help you to identify them and also help you get excited about the new things that you're observing for those little salamanders. And there's other things you can do. You can weigh the salamander. Maybe over time, a stream is having smaller and smaller salamanders. We'd wanna find out why is that? Why are those salamanders getting smaller? Is there something that's damaging the ecosystem? So we wanna keep track of those changes within the population here in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Now, a lot of things like to eat salamanders. The sheer volume of salamanders is greater than all of the mammals combined in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And what that means is there's a lot of salamanders in our streams, but it also means a lot of things are trying to eat the salamanders. There's a couple different things that salamanders do to get away from predators. They lose their tail, right? So the reason why they do that is because if you're an owl or a bird um, and you're trying to grab, or even a cat, maybe you have a house cat that's outside and tries to kill one of those little lizards, they drop their tail and it keeps moving around and it distracts the cat. So then the cat goes to that tail. Well, it's the same thing with these salamanders. So even though they're not the same species and they're not, um, these ones aren't terrestrial, they have that same tactic where they lose their tail and that helps them to escape while the predator goes after their tail. So everything eats salamanders, but what do the salamanders eat? Lots of different kinds of flies have larvae that have an aquatic stage. So sometimes those salamanders will eat those. I've seen a salamander eat a little tiny fairy shrimp. So salamanders eat all kinds of little tiny things. 
So after catching our black-bellied salamander, we're gonna put it back in its home. We're gonna release it right where we caught it. Well, we have a lot of questions about salamanders. So one of them is, can we keep them? And the answer, of course, is they have a, all of these amazing adaptations to live specifically in the environment that we find them in. So we never wanna take them out of that environment because they probably wouldn't survive. When we're done making all of our observation, maybe recording our data, or maybe just enjoying making a new friend, we always wanna put them back right where we found them. They are aquatic, they have their special eyes on top of their head to look out, they have their favorite rocks that they live under, so we always wanna keep them in the environment that we find them in. So it might seem pretty easy to find salamanders here in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, but there are salamanders everywhere so I encourage you to go outside, flip some rocks, and see what you can see. Make observations of any salamanders that you find in your own backyards or parks.